all right here we go here we go what's up y'all what's up thank you for joining us for yet again another episode of faith family finance t roy here hey y'all let's go y'all that's all i'm gonna say there's quite a few things that has gone on this week number one baby boy and it's finally a month old now seems like yesterday he was just born so he's officially a month old now uh your boy got some new equipment so check out the new headphones five below hey five below you let me go ahead and practice this message is brought to you by our sponsors five below <laughs> so we got a new microphone and it's Five below from the headphones. The new mic was from Walmart. It's called J Lab. So I think you'll definitely start to hear uh, better sound quality. And I'm testing it out. So this mic, I don't have to, you know, hold close to me or it don't have to be right up on me. I can actually sit back and it picks up the sound from a distance. Now, hopefully, it's not picking up no extra background noise. Um, cause I, I think I project my voice pretty well. Only thing is I can't hear myself and I used to like to use this fancy soundboard type thing. If you can see it on the screen and, um, or switchboard or whatever. And I love it y'all because it does many different functions. Also got this from Walmart and this is, this was by Vivatar, Vivatar, however you pronounce it. So. This message was brought, brought to you by our sponsors, Five Below, Walmart, Vivitar, J Lab. We thank you for your sponsor for sponsoring this message, and our can, and our camera, which is Canon, um, and we could just go on and on. So, a lot of this stuff, y'all, I'm new to and trying out and experimenting, but that won't stop the show from going on. So, the title of this episode on this day is it's my season it's my season and if you wanted to know you know what component of faith family or finances this episode about and this episode will focus on the category of faith it's my season y'all and we're talking about faith so if you will if you have your bibles and i'm gonna try not to preach but I may just end up preaching. Uh oh, I'm hearing some. All right, new equipment. All right, J Lab. <laughs> and five below. That's why I probably want to hear some <laughs> static. All right. If you would, take out your Bibles. And I had the privilege of ministering on Sunday. And this was what the Lord laid on my heart to minister. It's my season. And I want you to go with me to John. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want you to go with me to John chapter 15. And in John chapter 15, this is when Jesus is talking about the true vine. And I'm going to highlight a couple of verses and I, you can go back in your own time and read John to see what the Lord is saying to you. But I believe that this is a prophetic word going forward, forth that this is your season. And when we understand and get our mindset to align with it being our season, then we start to maneuver and operate differently, right? So in John verse one, it says, I am the true vine. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And he, every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue continue you in my love if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as i have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love so i said i won't gonna read the whole thing but i did <laughs> that was uh john 15 verses 1 through 10 and what the lord put on my heart was saying that it's my season was because uh, many of you, you know, have gone through trials and tribulations. Many of you have gone through circumstances. Many, many of you have gone through some betrayal and people may have turned their backs on you. Many of you have gone through sickness and, you know, you're still standing. The stroke didn't take you out. The heart attack didn't take you out. The cancer didn't take you out. The, um, the challenges, you know, that, that, came against your body and the infirmity or sickness that hit your body didn't take you out you've many of you have endured some things you've you've gone through some challenges and as the old folk would say you don't look like what you've been through many of you you know it's a miracle and it's a blessing that you are still in your right frame of mind you went through the repossession you went through the divorce you went through uh, the foreclosure, you went through losing everything that you thought was of value. You've uh, been terminated or fired from this job and shifted from another job. You were overlooked on the promotion and, and you know, like people talked about you. People spread it, false lies and, and rumors that, you know, uh, you endured and you've overcame some things. And not only did you overcome some things, but you, uh, you, you saw people and you, you prayed for people that was sick when you were sick and you saw people get their healing and their breakthrough before you got your breakthrough you pray for people to to get their home and to get their marriage and to get you know uh, their blessing and their financial breakthrough and you gave to people while you were in lack you you pulled the knife out of people's back when you had a knife that was in your back right and, and nobody uh, there to help you pull it out so the point in me sharing all that is because you've went through some things and you've come out on the other side and now it's time for you to start to declare that it's my season it is your season to be blessed it is your season to walk into the abundance and the favor and the authority and the anointing of god it is your season god desires for us to bear much fruit God desires for us to live in abundance. God's desire for us to have the fruit of the spirit. It's your season. And oftentimes, you know, uh, in the in the scriptures, let's let's just start in the scriptures. We'll 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 let me let me slow down. So if you if you're saying, okay, I understand that it's my season, um, we have to be prepared. So you may be thinking, well, how do I know that it's my season? Or how do I, how can I tell that there are some signs that show that it's my season? Because if it's my season, I don't want to, I, I want to make sure that I don't miss it, right? I want to make sure that I don't miss this season. As you guys know, you can see uh, in, in the natural that seasons change, right? Seasons come to an end. Like during this, during, uh, you can tell that times are changing when pollen starts to come out, when the, the, uh, leaves and flowers start to grow, you know, you can tell what season we we're in or we're transitioning to. And that's spring. You could tell when it starts to become a hundred degrees outside and 102 and wherever you are. Uh, and, and it's, it's, it's real hot that summer you could tell when the leaves start drying up and or, or changing colors uh pretty colors um red and orange leaves and 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 they start falling off the trees and falling in, on, onto the ground that's that's fall you could tell when snow is coming that's winter so seasons my point of saying all that is seasons change seasons come to an end right so how do you know 
that this your season and you don't want to miss it? Or what can you do? What are some signs to be prepared? And if you don't think you're prepared, how can you go back and make sure to double check some things to make sure that you're prepared? I remember in elementary school when we would take a, a quiz or a test, the, the teacher would always say, um, go back and double check your work. I remember doing multiplication and the, I hate it when she would say, show your work. Showing the work was going back and double checking to make sure I was confident in the answer that I had. So how do you double check? The first thing we do is we must focus, right? In verse one, Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. So if Jesus says I'm the true vine, then there's without him saying it, well, he really does say it, but saying what he without him saying it, saying it directly. He says it without saying it. He says, I'm the true vine. So if he's saying he's the true vine, then there must mean that it's a false vine somewhere or there's some false vines somewhere. So it's important that we focus on the true vine so that we are aware of something being a false vine, being connected or rooted in a false vine this could be false doctrine uh there's a lot of uh, a lot of doctrine going around and a lot of different teachings where we live in an age of information we live in a digital age where there's just so many things that's being thrown around that we can uh so easily adapt to and so easily uh, adjust and align ourselves to and if we're not careful we'll find ourselves being rooted in a false vine there's new age um, doctrine. There's um, witchcraft. There's um, what, are, what are some other um, um, doctrines? There, there, uh, uh, astrology, horoscopes. There's and not, not even just doctrine, but there's some things out here that can sound good. There's false prophets. There there are people who who preach the gospel. And uh, with, with an ulterior motive. Uh, so the, the whole point in all of that is that we must be focused. We must focus on the true vine. We must focus on the true vine because the Bible says that we are to, we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. So our, when we adjust our focus, it helps us to be able to decipher and distinguish what's the real thing. And what's uh, what's a substitute? What's the real thing? And what what's a counterfeit? What's a, a real thing? And what's 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 authentic? And what's not? Right. So when we begin to focus, it helps us to um, be able to decipher, be able to know and understand the voice of God. How do we focus? Prayer. How do we focus? Fasting. How do we focus? Being obedient. How do we focus? Getting in, getting in the word, y'all. Getting in the word. There are so many things out here that if you're not careful, something can just cling to you. And next thing you know, you, you know. So we must focus on the true vine, the true vine, right? And what's so important is even in this verse, Jesus lets us know the importance of us focusing on the true vine because he says my father is the husband man so a husband man is basically a tiller of the ground a husband man is is basically where uh jesus has decided to plant his roots so where he planted his roots in the base of the the, the soil is that ain't even make sense. Where he planted his roots in the base of the soil. Y'all know what I mean. Look, he planted... What I'm trying to say is Jesus lets us know that not only is it important for us to focus on him, but we also must have a foundation. And he doesn't just tell us to have a foundation in him without him having a foundation. Because he says, my foundation is the husband man. So if Jesus himself needs, uh, I mean, he said, my foundation is the father, the father, God, the father. So if Jesus himself needs a foundation, 
what make you think we don't? If I am that I am, if Jesus, who was perfect in all his ways, needed a foundation, what makes you think that we don't? So, we must focus. It's, it's three F's, y'all. We must focus. We must have a foundation. Also, a foundation, it says um, in verse 4, abide in me and I in you. So, when you abide in something... When you abide in something, that basically means you 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 surround yourself, you indwell yourself, you you um, you engulf yourself into this whatever you abide you're abiding in, right? So if Jesus says to abide in me, and I in you, he says that because he says a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. I, it takes me back to when I was uh, I would grow cucumbers and or vegetables in itself and anytime that I would grow vegetables cucumbers was the most successful the thing that I was most successful at growing but I noticed that cucumbers grow on a vine and the vine that one vine that cucumbers grow from will eventually start to run along the ground and that vine creates other flowers or you know or whatever so i started to realize that from that one vine a flower would form on the ground create its own roots and establish a whole nother vine out of that vine so if i was to cut the flower off from that original vine there's no way that that vine would bear fruit because it has now departed from the source so what happens when we when, when you cut off those other vines and it becomes withered and it becomes detached from the source that now becomes stuff that you could put to help jump start your fire <laughs> your fire pit <laughs> but it won't bear no fruit it's going to be consumed in the fire so y'all, the word, oh my God, the word is so powerful. So that's why he says to abide in him and he is the true vine because apart from him, you can't do nothing. So he also says, um, so so let me go back. That's number two. So number one is focus. Number two is uh, having a foundation. Abide in the Lord, but not only abide in him, allow him to abide in you right so it becomes a relationship and it doesn't become just um just a just a a a, a, a religious practice it doesn't become just a just a, a i don't like using the word ritual but it doesn't just become a routine or something that that you you just wake up and uh, oh I, I just have to pray because this is my routine no i wake up and i i have to pray because i gotta be in relationship with my with with i am that i am i gotta be in relationship with my father i gotta be in relationship with the holy spirit to know and understand the truth of some things right so we have to focus, number one. We have to have a foundation, number two. And since we're talking about fruit, right? Um, I remember growing up, my mom would play this game. And I, I'm a big video game man. Like, I, I, I like playing video games. Um, I think I'm pretty good as well. You know, if you don't think so, then let's go pick up the sticks. I could play FIFA, we could play 2K, we could play Madden, um, Call of Duty. I'm all right in Call of Duty, but you know, you want to pick up sticks, let's do it. Um, play a little Fortnite here and there, but I love playing video games. I remember growing up, we had Nintendo. And Nintendo was the thing. Super Mario Brothers. I remember Sega Dreamcast. I remember the game that used to have a little gun and the duck would be going across the screen and you got to flap, flap, shoot the duck. Called Duck Hunt. I remember that. There was a game specifically, and I think this game came out before all of that. And it was the company name was Namco. And this game, there was uh, this yellow character with a with a circular, a pie-shaped mouth. 
or a slice of the pie missing. And he would go around collecting dots. Do, 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 and then he would collect a pellet. And once he get that pellet, he'll turn a different color. I mean, not he would turn, but there was some ghost that was chasing him. And the ghost would turn a different color. And um, for those of you who don't know, it's Pac-Man. And, but Pac-Man not the game I'm talking about. There was another game that was called Miss Pac-Man. And that's the one that I like because my mom played Miss Pac-Man a lot. And she was like a, a Miss Pac-Man master almost. If there was, and it probably was a thing for it, but if she would have gone to the, the masters for Miss Pac-Man, it would have been her. Because she used to tell me stories about when she was growing up. She would say, you know, everybody else out chasing boys and all that and in the streets and fighting and doing all this crazy stuff. And she said, I was at the corner store playing Miss Pac-Man. And she said, I stayed there so much that the guy hired her to do things in the store because all she would do is play the Miss Pac-Man machine. And she said, you know, she played the machine so much that she would run the high score over. She would beat the boards. She mastered this thing, y'all, to the point where she would start telling us stories and she would tell us about the different characters of the game. So you had the four ghosts. One was red, one was blue, one was pink, and one was brown. And their names, she knew their names. She even knew their characteristics. There was Pinky, there was Blinky, there was Inky, and there was Sue. Now, Sue was the brown ghost. And she said that Sue was basically like the dumb one. And I'm like, Mom, how you know the ghost was dumb? And she said, well, since I played it so much, I would look and I would see and follow the ghost. Or she said, the ghost, the brown ghost would always just do something stupid. It was an opportune time for the brown ghost to catch her. And the ghost would just go off sideways or run away or let her out to, to allow her to continue to live. So I'm like, wow, Ma. So I would watch her play uh, for, for Christmas one day. I brought her a joystick, a Miss Pac-Man joystick. And she loved it and she would play it and she still had it. But she's like, oh, this ain't the original thing. This ain't the real deal. But she would still work that thing. I'm like, okay, all right, she good. So, um... So I remember a specific point in the game where there was this fruit that would come out and the fruit would just hop, hop, hop. And oh, when that fruit came out, you would just try to go and get the fruit. And since we're talking about fruit in the scriptures, there was this fruit. And oftentimes I would try to play the game and most times I would go and chase the fruit. Ooh, and my chasing of the fruit sometimes put me in a compromising situation because when I would chase the fruit, sometimes the fruit would lead me directly to the ghost and I would lose a life because I was chasing fruit. My point in telling you that Miss Pac-Man story is that uh, instead of us being fruit chasers, let's be foundation makers. Let's be foundation builders, right? So if we have to focus, if God is telling us to focus on the true vine, but he's also telling us to abide, that means a foundation, a foundation, have a foundation in Christ. Because if we begin chasing fruit, and I'm going to tell you what I mean by chasing fruit. Most people will say, well, hey, I'm chasing the money. I'm chasing the bag, I'm chasing success, I'm chasing the house, I'm chasing marriage, I'm chasing what the world or culture or society says that success looks like. Then I begin to start to create habits and, 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 uh, and things and I start to do things that, um, that, that, are, that, that doesn't hold no value, right? Because I'm chasing fruit. And God is telling us to have a foundation where we're not fruit chasers. And, and here's what I mean. This is what uh, uh, um, fruit chasing, or this is what I mean by fruit chasing. We'll chase fruit, and it doesn't have any real substance. So when we get the house, because that's what the world calls fruit, when we get the house, we're wondering why now we don't have no, no peace in the house. We don't even want to go home or we can't enjoy the home because now we have to sustain it. Uh, when we get the, the, the marriage, 
uh, we don't have no peace in the marriage or we're always arguing or we're trying to figure out if we're equally yoked because we chased the marriage and we didn't chase the foundation, right? Um, when, when we get the money, when we get the money, we wonder why we still lack a peace. We still lack joy. We still lack a happiness. We still lack love in our hearts because have we compromised our integrity along the way? By not focusing on the foundation. Have we done some things that God told us that we ought not to do because we were chasing fruit? This is why people can have a million dollars and still lack something on the inside. Still desire more because they've chased the money and they've reached this financial goal. And, and they've, they've achieved and obtained and bought everything that they want. But they still have a void that's left inside of their heart. It's because they've chased a fruit and not chased the foundation or not built the foundation. The Bible tells us that... Um, 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 on this rock I think it said <laughs> on this rock I built my house all other ground is sinking sand right so that means a foundation but I'm going to tell you about foundations foundation ain't sexy oh the fruit is what's sexy don't nobody go and buy a home and be like let me look at the foundation except the engineer except the builder they realize and understand how important the, founda the foundation is to the longevity and the sustainability of the house. But we go and look at the fruit. Oh, it got marble cabinets. Oh, it got a it got three story. Oh, it's thirty six hundred square feet. But if it's on a sinking foundation, oh, we in trouble, right? Oh, it won't weather a storm. Oh, so. Focus on the foundation, not the fruit. Because what will happen is you'll circumvent or you will, uh, you will, you won't submit yourself to the process and the purging process that that God has taken us through. Some of us don't like to be purged. I'm gonna tell you why. Because purging sometimes hurts. I remember growing. I've never been successful at growing tomatoes until I found out recently that when you grow tomatoes as soon as it starts to get leaves on it you're supposed to cut it off that's a purging you cut it off so that when the tomatoes starts to grow it comes back strong the vine comes back stronger it produces more healthy tomatoes without purging it you might get one or two if you're lucky but when you purge the tomatoes when you when it starts to show some evidence and some signs of life you go and purge it. You take the leaves off of it. And now the tomato branch looks as if it's not doing anything. It hasn't grown. So it looks funny. But underneath the roots have taken place. And it's done some things that have uh, supernaturally advanced its growth process. Or sped up its growth process supernaturally and organically. And oftentimes we 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 try to circumvent or or um, or avoid the purging process, and we'll find another way to go and get the fruit, and not realizing when we do that we just created GMO fruit. So we genetically modified a process, and we're wondering why when we get the fruit, it's not sustainable. We're wondering why when we get the strawberries, the strawberries the size of my arm. Y'all know that ain't normal for a strawberry to be the size of my head. GMO. That's because there's been some chemicals or some things that's been added to it that takes away its nutritional value. Hmm. Lord. So don't, don't, don't GMO your process. And then if you eat too much of it, you'll find yourself having some side effects. That organic fruit and an organic pro uh, uh, and an organic growth process doesn't give you. Ooh. So, my point: don't chase the fruit, but build the foundation. Focus on the true vine. And the last F, most importantly, well, not most importantly, but 
the last F is have faith. Have faith. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Have faith. When you go and walk in the room, have faith that it's my season. This is my promotion. It's my season. This is my breakthrough. When life circumstances start to hit you this week after you've heard this prophetic declaration over your life that it's my season, I need you to tell your situation and tell your circumstance that it's my season. When your kids start acting crazy and your spouse start acting crazy, you need to speak. It's my season. When uh, sickness tries to hit your body, it's my season. And what you're declaring is not just it's my season and, and, and you're declaring just some pie in the sky things. You're declaring the word of God. No, sickness, you can't have my body because the, the word says <laughs> by his stripes I'm healed. So, um sickness you gotta go because it's my season to be healthy uh, it's my season for this poverty uh to 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 flee from me it's my season to walk in the abundance and the faithfulness and the fruitfulness and 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 the things of god it's my season to be a glory carrier and lord i dare not give anything or anybody or anyone the glory of what you're doing so it's your season it's your season i need you to feel that get that in your spirit and decree and declare over your life over everything that you have over every situation circumstance i don't care if the bankruptcy uh got to you i don't care if the if the home mortgage people told you no i don't care if it's if it looks like foreclosure is on the brink i don't care if they told you stage four cancer i don't care what they told you i don't care who denied you i don't care who threw you by the wayside whoever told you and spoke a word curse over you and told you, you won't go be nothing i need you to decree and declare that it it's your season. It's your season. So, that's the message for you all today. I pray that you were blessed. Please, please, please like, share the podcast, follow, subscribe to the podcast. Go ahead and click the little button, subscribe. Um, and, y'all, it's your season. So we'll end now in prayer. Let us pray, Lord. We thank you for receiving your prophetic word today that says that it's our season. Lord, we align ourselves to your will, your purpose, your plan for our lives that you have for us. Lord, um, we thank you. We just thank you for just your faithfulness, your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Time and time again, we repent of any sins. We repent for um, anything that we've done that was not pleasing in your sight. We uh, renounce it. We come out of an agreement with anything that's not aligned with your word and the promises that you have for us, God. So, Lord, um, we thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We decree and declare the promises of God over our life. We decree and declare that it's our season in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Peace out, y'all.